are obsessed with pizza. And every city in America has its favorites. Thin, deep, wood-fired. So many options. Anything else? How do you separate the pros from the imposters? Just like the professionals always say, you've got to pace yourself. That's where I come in. One more. Journalist, author, pizza podcaster, and tour company founder. Yeah, there we go. Thank you! I've made it my mission to find the nation's best pizzas, sometimes in the most unlikely places. Top is soft, bottom's crunchy. The pepperoni is quite spicy. Each episode of Pizza City tackles a regional style in a different city. I've traveled pretty extensively and eat pizzas around the world and around the U.S. On today's show, we're in my city, Chicago, as we finally get to the bottom of a nagging question. What is Chicago-style pizza? Believe it or not, there's a lot more to it than just deep dish. In fact, there are three styles we're known for in the Windy City. Tavern style, deep, and stuff. Chicago style pizza? Well, it's not a simple answer. The problem is that for too long, locals have let late night comedians and tourists dictate the narrative. This is not pizza! This is tomato soup in a bread bowl! The problem with that is that they come to Chicago for a couple of days and then eat in the pizzerias that are within walking distance of their Michigan Avenue hotels and then make some kind of grand pronouncement. <laughs> If you ask a local who grew up in the city or suburbs on places like Triano's, Aurelio's, Barnaby's, Baracco's, Vito and Nick's. The best pizza in the south side of Chicago. They'll tell you Chicago style means thin and crispy, square cut, sauce and cheese, edge to edge. So who's right? Well, they kind of both are, and that's why we're going to try to tackle this answer today. The sauce is rich, the cheese is rich, the dough is rich. Scoffed is actually different than deep dish. Chicago is a thin crust pizza city. This is Pizza Central of America. Chicago is Pizza City USA. How do I know? Well, I've lived here for 30 years, raised two kids in the city, and I've written the definitive book on the subject. Since Prohibition in the 1930s, Chicagoans have been eating thin pizza. It's a style that was created in the bars and taverns of the city. Chicago is a city of 77 neighborhoods. The tradition was guys would stop in the neighborhood bar on their way home from work and have a couple of beers before they go in for dinner. Well, bartenders realize they could sell more beers if they give you something salty to eat. So they created these thin pizzas, cut them into squares to fit on a cocktail napkin, pass them around the bar for free, Thus, the tavern-style bar pie was born in the Midwest. That's what we've been eating for 100 years in Chicago. Now, we're here at Pat's today in Lincoln Park. They've been around since 1950, currently owned by third-generation Gina Pianetto. Her grandfather, Pat, started it back in 1950, and his son, Nick, took it over, and they really made the pizza what it is today. Ours is, I would like to say, one of the thinnest crusts that is out there. Square cut on all of our pizzas. Everyone thinks Chicago style pizza is deep dish stuffed and the thin crust tavern style kind of gets lost in there but Chicago is definitely a thin crust city. Now real Chicagoans know to order a sausage with jardinera. Sausage being raw Bulk sausage with lots of fennel pinched and pressed directly onto the raw pie with jardinera, the classic condiment you have on an Italian beef sandwich. That gives it that pickled, sort of briny, crunchy essence to the pizza. You don't need a lot of seasoning and red pepper like you do on the East Coast to add oomph to your slice. Now you could go for a middle piece, an end piece. I'm a corner guy. You're gonna definitely get some crispiness and some crunch. It should be an audible crunch when you bite into a pizza, but especially when it pats. After about a decade of tavern style in Chicago, in 1943, a bar here at the corner of Ohio and Wabash called Ricardo's starts messing with a new style of pizza. Ike Sewell from Texas, Rick Ricardo, a local bar owner, and Adolfo Malnati, the general manager, get together and decide they want to do something to give the GIs coming back from the war something bigger and better and more value than that thin tavern style pizza. So they come up with a deep dish pan that their oven company gives them and they start pressing the dough out into the pan, covering it with cheese first to protect that layer of dough and then toppings and then a chunky reduced sauce. 
thus Deep Dish Pizza is born in 1943. It took them 12 years to open their second location just down the street called Pizzeria Due. When they opened up Due, they decided to call that bar Ricardo's something else. Let's call it Pizzeria Uno, since that was the first place we opened. So 1943, 1955, two deep dishes in Chicago. While both of these are being run by these families, Adolfo's son, Lou Malnati, is managing both of them. He eventually asks the boss, Mr. Sewell, if he can buy the business. Sewell says no. He ends up selling Uno's and Due's to a Boston-based fried chicken franchisee. <laughs> That's a long story. Lou Malnati quits, and a year later in 1971 on St. Patrick's Day, opens Lou Malnati's Deep Dish Pizza in Lincolnwood, a suburb just north of Chicago. Five months after Lou Malnati opened his place in Lincolnwood, Larry Aronson opened up My Pie on Loyola's campus on the north side of the city. My Pie was the first deep dish available outside of Chicago. At one point, they were available in nine different states. Today, there was just this one location here in Bucktown. We're about a 15 minute drive north of downtown. In a little strip mall, you definitely pass if you don't know where you're going. But this recipe has been around for 50 years. There's a reason why it's so good. Two big things that were really unique. One is actually seasoning the tomatoes so that they had complementary flavor to the famous Italian sausage. Handling the dough like a baker does, so we end up with like a crisp crunch to our crust rather than kind of like that hard brittle crunch that you'll get almost everywhere else. So here's the thing about deep dish in the Midwest. First of all, you've got the crumbled sausage with lots of fennel in it. You don't typically see that on the East Coast. You get this really chunky tomatoes reduced somewhat with that dried oregano, which gives it so much flavor. The base layer of cheese across the bottom, the mozzarella, and then this crispy crust. Now look at this, I'm holding this slice up with one hand. I don't need a knife and fork. It's got a crispy undercarriage made from the generations of bakers in this family, in the Aronson family. So quite different than what you might think of when you see you know, comedy specials about deep dish or stuff in Chicago. This pizza has a lot of integrity, a lot of character, a lot of chew, a lot of crunch. Um, there's a lot going on. And when you look at the size of it, it's no higher than an East Coast Sicilian in terms of its depth or its thickness. So it's, it's something that a lot of people get wrong when they're talking about Chicago deep dish. And yet this style has been around for 50 years. Before I show you the last style, I want to show you one more deep dish here in Chicago, right off Michigan Avenue. This is La Briola. Now, deep dish for 40 years stayed the same, 70s, 80s, 90s, but in 2014, Rich La Briola, former commercial baker, got into the pizza business and made this deep dish pizza that's kind of a, a next level pizza for the deep dish style, taking some of the best elements from Detroit, the crispy cheese edge, Pequods and birds in the suburbs in a deep pan, but then more Midwestern, corn oil, corn flour, and that coarse cornmeal that goes underneath all the pies in Chicago. We didn't invent it, we perfected it though. Pizza is hot bread, and hot bread doesn't have necessarily a lot of flavor. We added a large amount of bread starter, something we would use for ciabatta, dough, or baguette, because that's natural fermented flavor. All the pizzas are topped with imported Pecorino Romano to give it some saltiness, some dried oregano. The great thing about this pizza, even though you can do knife and fork, you can pick these up with your hands. There's the crispy cheese edge, similar to Detroit. It's got a lot of heft to it, but it's also balanced. The thing I talk about in my book, OBR, optimal bite ratio. Every bite, you're gonna have crust, cheese, sauce, topping. So in 71, with all the deep dish places opening in Chicago, the family behind Guy's Pizza on the northwest side of the city decided they should do something different. So it was Rocco Palazzi. Some friends were saying, hey, you got to start making deep dish pizza, which he was only making thin pizza at the time. So he said, you know what, I don't want to do the same thing. I want to, I want to do something different. So he literally went back to Italy and his mother used to make this Easter cake called Sarsita. Put a bottom crust, he put all the ingredients on the inside, the top crust, but then he put his sauce on the top of the crust. So that's where the first stuffed pizza was made, and it just took off from there. Totally different construction. As Dave said, it's the bottom crust with the ingredients on top of it, followed by another layer of dough, and then that lake of sort of chunky, reduced tomato sauce a little Pecorino Romano and dried oregano across the top. You've seen that before. But a higher pizza nonetheless definitely has these 
sort of castle walls along the outer perimeter, which signifies a stuffed pie. That typically is the pie that out-of-towners get confused with deep dish, but stuffed is its own category altogether. Now per capita, there's probably a lot more tavern style consumed here than there is stuff, but there are a number of stuff places, Superosa, Angelo's, and 21 locations of Nancy's, but it is the style that is most widely mocked outside of Chicago. But when you're talking Chicago style pizza, you've got to include it in that triad. Tavern style, deep, and stuffed. I'm Steve Delinsky. Thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed this taste of Pizza City.